Hello, I'm Jackie. This reading is from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, and he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they've taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I've not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Hello, I'm David. Let's take a moment to pray as we begin. Lord Jesus, before whom all things lie open, bless the words of my mouth, direct my purpose and my heart, and help us all as we listen not to turn aside to the right or be distracted to the left, but always to walk in your footsteps. Amen. Up until this point in John's story of Jesus' life and death, Mary Magdalene hasn't featured at all. She's briefly mentioned uh, the story of the crucifixion where it says that Mary, Jesus' mother, is standing there and Mary Magdalene is one of the other women who have named. But other, other than that, all that we know about her comes from the other three Gospels. But in the story of Jesus rising from the dead in John's Gospel, Mary Magdalene is right at the centre. Very early in the morning, while it's still dark, she goes to the tomb to attend to Jesus' body and she becomes the first person to realise that the tomb is empty. Although they're not mentioned by name, we know that other women must have been with her as well because they come back from the tomb. They go to Peter and John and they say to them, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. So the girls first realise that the tomb is empty, but then the boys take centre stage for a brief moment, running to the tomb. John apparently feeling it's important to let us know that he can run faster than Peter can. And John looks in, Peter blunders in, and they see there the linen cloths, a uh, word athonia in Greek, and the face cloth, the sudarian that went over the head, 
folded or rolled up still in their place. Some of the scholars, the, the, the experts on this, differ a little bit about what that means. Some think the Greeks suggest that the cloths have been, that have been wrapped around Jesus' dead body have been sort of neatly folded up by the risen Jesus and placed back down. Others see in the Greek um, a somewhat Star Wars-y sort of implication that the linen strips are still in the place where they had been. In other words, Jesus has been raised to life through the clothes, um, which have simply sort of collapsed in their place. That appeals to me. I like that uh, idea, frustrated Jedi as I am. So with faith half formed and, and still much to ponder, the two disciples, the two men also return to their homes without yet having a message to share and without understanding the scriptures, as John tells us in the gospel here, that Jesus must rise from the dead. It is, as it were, still early in the morning and it's the dawn of faith. The first rays of sunshine are coming over the horizon, but it's not yet in its full radiance. While the boys go home, Mary and perhaps some of the other girls still linger at the tomb, no doubt still grieving, probably not merely weeping, but most likely in that culture, continuing to express her grief by openly wailing. She too stoops and looks into the tomb and sees something different. She sees angelic figures. Clearly, she's not fully with it. No question of who are you or how did you get in here when Peter and John were in there two minutes previous. She still doesn't understand and instead weeps to them that she doesn't know where Jesus' body has been taken. She still thinks, in that sense, that someone's stolen the dead body. She turns away from the tomb and then she sees Jesus himself. Though the light has still not yet fully dawned for her, she, assume, she, she assumes that he, he must be the gardener, a grave tender or grave digger. Jesus adds to the question of the angels a question of his own, a question he asks all of us. Whom do you seek? For Mary, she finally recognises Jesus when he calls her by her name. Just as Jesus had promised in, in John chapter 10, the sheep hear the shepherd's voice and he calls his own sheep by name. And Mary responds to this call, this, this personal call, really personally, intimately even. Earlier in the gospel, pe people have been calling Jesus teacher, but here she calls, Mary calls him my teacher, Rabunai, literally my hero or my great one. While John says that he was the first one to believe, Mary Magdalene is the first one to bear apostolic witness. She is the apostle to the apostles. This is a tricky one for folk who don't support women bishops and priests to overcome. If it was the women who were first told and the women who first bore apostolic witness. In her grief, Mary has encountered Angels, angeloi in Greek, the angelic messengers sent from God. But now in her belief, she is sent to proclaim to, to angelo by Jesus himself. Now the sun has fully risen and will very soon illuminate the whole world. There are three things here, like the rising of the sun to its full brightness, that shape the disciples as they move by stages in having their eyes opened and their hearts changed by the news of the risen Jesus. First, they see the physical evidence, the empty tomb, the laid out clothes. Second, we're told really what Peter and John lacked was that understanding of the scriptures and all that had been foretold. They didn't know that or they didn't see that and because of that, they fail to fully grasp what's happening. And then third, what Mary was the first to know was a personal encounter 
with the risen Jesus. That little triumvirate of things are still affecting people's lives today. Many of you will know that we're running an Alpha course at the moment here in West Morning and Offham. And it's been interesting and a joy to see folks on the course growing in their understanding in these three areas. First, seeing physical evidence, then understanding the scriptures, and then third, that personal encounter with Jesus Christ. They are considering the evidence as they grow in their understanding and their depth of faith, looking at the story of Jesus of Nazareth, not only in the New Testament, but also in Jewish and Roman writings of the same period, learning afresh that his existence is not in any question, but then considering also, in terms of the evidence, the puzzle of the resurrection, looking at the Romans, the Jewish authorities, the disciples, as Mary was thinking, Who has the body? Who's stolen the body? Considering why on earth anyone would have a vested interest in stealing a dead body. And if they did steal it, and they didn't subsequently produce it, uh, why not? Because they could have quickly kiboshed this uh, new meddlesome Christian collective if they really wanted to when they started proclaiming Jesus risen from the dead. And the folk on the Alpha course like myself, like many, many other people who have come before us, have begun to realise, incredible as that may seem to our ears, that the only logical, sensible option was that something truly transformative took place that day. They have considered the evidence. They're also studying the scriptures, learning more of what is written in the Old Testament and prophesied about the coming Messiah. And they're learning more of what Jesus said and what he taught about himself and the evidence we have in that sense in the scriptures from the New Testament as well. And from there, well then, they begin to take a step of faith. A risk, for sure. But a step that's a reasonable step, actually. A step based on on evidence and on the scriptures into that third thing into that encounter with the risen Jesus. So it was for Mary and the other women, the first witnesses to the resurrection. So it was for Peter and John and the other disciples that became such fervent witnesses and apostles all over the ancient Near East. So it is with us, so it is with me. It is only when all three come together, evidence and scripture and then personal encounter, that faith fully dawns like the sun rising on a bright spring day. Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen.